that book in the book of Acts it said but ye shall receive power uh, you know all about this scripture you have already read it but what I have in memory I want to know if you've experienced it experiencing scripture is a blessing sometimes sometimes you experience that all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution when you experience that one it's not much fun but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth and I want to say tonight that it seems here that Jesus is implying that your job and my job is a supernatural job. <laughs> Seems to imply to me that he said, Go into all the world, and lo, I am with you, that we have a supernatural job to do. With a supernatural job comes supernatural power. Yeah, come on. And we're trying to do a supernatural job without a supernatural power. Right. Right. We ain't going to get it done. Now, some of you young men, you need to learn this. If the Holy Ghost of God moves in an old-fashioned camp meeting, somebody's going to create the atmosphere for him to move in. He's, he is particular about the atmosphere he moves in. An atmosphere of confusion, the Holy Ghost ain't coming. I've been there. I've heard men chop each other up, cut each other up, tear each other up, all the brethren, fellow man, uh, the abortion clinics, all that. And sometimes that needs to be touched on lightly with a 23-pound hammer. Yeah, it needs to be touched on. But this is a camp meeting. Amen. And there's men here that are tired. These men have preached, and they've uh, been faithful to God, and some of these men love God, and, and uh, that's a supernatural job that they have to do. When we talk about our call, we find our Lord calling His disciples. Uh, he went out and prayed all night long. Looked like He was going to do something supernatural. And sometimes we put young men uh, in the forefront and push them out. And uh, you better be careful. Uh, don't, don't worry about me. I brought my own amen. I brought everything. I already know what you are because I met you in a hall and you even refused to look at me. So I know what you are. And let me just say tonight before I ever start. Amen. Yeah, that's what I think of you and everything you're doing. Amen. Amen. That's what I think about. And you said, I'll whip you after service. Now, I've got three of my boys with me. I'm old and you wouldn't get a trophy for whooping me, but that big one over there, you going to have a time. Amen. <laughs> While I was coming up, I trained him. I knew I needed him down the road. Amen. Amen. The job that we do is supernatural. If we evangelize the world... And God never told us to do it if He didn't have the power to do it. And when God commissioned us to do it, then God enables us to do what God said we could do. God never told us to do nothing without giving us the power to do it. There's a supernatural power. He's our Father. When I get down to pray, I don't say, Our Father. I say, My Father. Amen. You say, Well, Brother what He is. Our Father. It's got to get closer than that. It's got to be my Father. Before I came out here as an old man that I used to 80 something years old, it's been my dad, been my example, and been my friend. But Superdad, I got on my knees when I got saved and asked God to let that old man live. I said, Lord, I need him. Never went to school a day in his life. Him and Earl has been so close to friends as like two brothers. Churches that have the Earls of Texas and going to run him back on a bus and Papa would take him down and put him on an airplane. He'd leave town without any money. He'd reach in pull out a roll and he always had a roll. Amen. And I started to leave town. I don't believe he'll be alive when I get back. And I said, Papa, I'll see you when I get back or on the other side. He said, good enough. I hope you're there. I'll be there. All depends on you, boy. Amen. 
But God has given us a supernatural job. And I'm sorry. I'm watching people try to do this with a clipboard and it won't work. Now go ahead and do all you want to. And, and I'm not uh, hitting nobody or criticizing nobody. Win everybody you can. I don't care. And it's been told around the country uh, that Brother Wood uh, don't believe in winning children. You're a liar. You're, you're a liar. I've spent my life trying to reach children. 1957, Brother Earl Hughes, you, 58, you come back. We had a big bus barn and always was after children. Is that right, Zach? You never in your life, boy, laid down in the bed in your life, in your home, when it wasn't 10 or 12 orphan children in the same house with you. Don't tell me what I believe. You're a lying hypocrite. You just don't like the rest of what I preach. It ain't the children that's bothering you. It's the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fellow said, Brother Wood, he don't believe in backsliding. Well, I practiced it for 30 years. I must believe it. <laughs> huh? Must believe it. Yes, sir. I preached a many old outlaw's funeral. It was a saved man. Saved man. Went back into sin. I remember, Jack, when you were just a boy, and one old Newt Andrews to God. No old Newt Andrews was my friend, Brother Willie. You and I went and identified his body. And somebody would cut his head loose from his body. The head was laying here, and the body was laying. And Willie calls me, and I identified the body. And I got it and said to them, and I say to you, he died and went to heaven because he wouldn't live for God. I believe that. Always believe it. Since you be lying on me, just because I believe most Christians ought to live a little different. I come up under Lester Roloff, he believes that. Willie, well, is that what he taught us? And he tell us, Willie, that you're supposed to live right? First time, first time I ever saw you was in a, a prime fast in 1955. Yeah, Freer, Texas, 35, 36 years ago. I met you in a prime fast. 42 preachers on the floor praying for the power of God. I looked around the other day, and you know, every one of those preachers are still in the ministry. Isn't that strange? They must have got the power of God on some of them. I'm telling you that Lester Roll have had a, something that he taught them boys about godliness and holiness and walking with the Lord that we've missed, brother. Amen. You say, I don't believe that's necessary. That's the reason you're going to fall into sin. Amen. The job is supernatural. The call is supernatural. The sending is supernatural. Yeah. Missionaries today, they jump on a boat and start somewhere like it's a, 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 a transportation somewhere in another country. will change all the circumstances. It ain't going to change nothing but just where you at. When you get over that, if you hadn't been supernatural called by God, you shall return. Amen. But you won't be like my God. It will not be victorious. Amen. Amen. God has sent us, and God will supernaturally keep you right where He sends you. Mm-hmm. He teaches us. He's supernatural God. Yeah, we're not, uh, we're not, uh, we're not following uh, these uh, some general. We call him the head commander. He calls and sin. It's all supernatural. Well, you, you don't like that word because there's a bunch of goofy holy rollers that use that. You, you, you think that you, we, we, it's a lot of things we don't use anymore because we're scared to be identified with this. Hey, listen, man, they don't even know where God is. They're like some of you, they're trying to shout him down. You can't shout him down. You shout after he gets down. After he begins to move around. And when God says, hey, and some of you just wait till he gets here. Wait till he gets here. He's coming. Oh, you say, hallelujah. We're two or three together together. I, I don't know much about what Dr. Bob Jones said. I ain't never met him. I don't even know him. I knew the old man. I had him for me. But I heard that other one say, he said, I've been in a lot of churches that run a thousand. And God ain't never been there. I said, Amen. I heard on the tape. I said, Amen. He said, I've been in the church where there wasn't 150. And God wasn't there. And wasn't never coming out. I said, Amen. I've been there. Oh, you said, well, two or three, God just was right there. No, no. I mean, I went to church at Shady Acres Baptist Church. And I looked under the skew. And I said, Lord, what did I do to run you off from here? 
and there was some, and I'm not, I'm not uh, honest, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying anything, but there was a lady and her husband that came from up in, well, anyway, I won't call the name of the school, right? They come from a good man's school up in the north. And they came down to Houston, and things just bogged down. And then I preached, and I preached, and it just bogged down, you leave the same. And it just bogged, and it bogged down. And finally, man, God, I said, Lord, where are you at? And this old crazy boy in my church, he ain't got no sense at all. And he just fell down on the floor. And he was just a, he ain't said a word, man. He, you could hear pins up in there. And of course, wasn't nothing else dropping around there. And uh, he got to praying. And God got to move. And then he got to picking up. And he just kept a praying and a praying and a praying. And, uh, and so these people, they all just like this. It was four families. They called me. They told me, said, we're, we're coming. We want to join in the morning. And so, but the big mama, she wasn't with them. So they went back home and they got, they got big mama, the wife of one of these head mogul here. And they come back that night. And she said, uh, Oh, before the church, she said they just enjoyed everything, but they didn't understand this man laying in the floor. What was he doing laying in the floor? I said, he was praying. He was praying. Well, what would he do be laying in the floor on Sunday morning praying? I said, because I needed somebody to pray for me. And he was praying. She said, didn't that bother you? I said, no, ma'am. It just bothers me when they don't pray. And she said, well, all of these young people that's with us here, these couple families, it just really disturbed them. Well, of all nights in the world, for God to save Jim Weedle. Jim Weedle looked like a fire plug. I mean, looked like, that, that tall, looked like Popeye, had tattoos all over his arm, and here he looked like a gorilla, and uh, got a very big knot on his head, like this big, uh, I teach that uh, the, the last Wednesday night, that God's going to put a hickey on your head, God will save you, and here Jim, he got a little hickey on his head. And he said, just as he hit that telephone phone's drunk, he said, Brother Wood, God, God's going to put a hickey on your head, and he's in jail, looking in a mirror, and that is not. Jim Weedle got saved Sunday night. And man, it just, it just, it just blew out. Dan Meadows went out the side. And another went out this side. Now, see, there's something to shout about. Jim Weedle got saved. We've been playing for Jim Weedle for three years. And I mean, when he got saved, I mean, these people just... And they left. And I said, you know, it's really something. This shouting can take a problem and move it out the back door. <laughs> oh, you said, Brother Wood, did you ever go this them? No! No! I, Big Mama had a headache on Sunday morning, and she'd come Monday to Sunday night, go tell me how to conduct a service. I never went back out by their house. Oh, well, Brother Wood, don't you know how much your church would have grew? That ain't what I'm worried about. You, 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 you don't believe this, but I, I cowboyed all my life. I don't know nothing but a horse. That's all I know. That's all I know. They have broke my hip. They have broke my pelvis. They broke my back. They broke every bone in my body. That's all I know. I love it. I love it. But you know what you can do? You don't go out there and do you, Danny Father. Danny Father, you was raised out there in the ranch country. You was raised on the ranch. Danny Father, you don't go out there and buy every old cow that's jumping out of the fence. You don't go to the auction sale and buy every old wormy, good-for-nothing cow that won't stay home and an old bull that roams all over the country. What do you do, brother? What? You just raise them, and you just get them saved, and you just raise them, until you got, and you sell some of them bad ones and ship some of them others until you get you a good little nucleus ass, and then you start you a herd. Hmm? And, and you build that thing on a good foundation. I know some of y'all, y'all say, no, no, brother, word. you know, brother, word. I, I know dummy. Listen to me, dummy. You just wait. You just wait. I know you're the smartest man in town. I know you made A's in all of your Bible class, and you know how to done. But I'm telling you, it is supernatural. <laughs> supernatural. Supernatural. You build a church, it's a church. It is supernatural. You say, brother, I'm not as churchy as you are. You might not be. And I believe a church is birthed by God. Yes, sir. You said, well, mine wasn't. It won't last long. Mm-hmm. That little church where I'm a pastor, hadn't had, before, hadn't had before preachers in 50 years. Four preachers, that's all. 50 years. Four, four preachers. I come, Brother Wood, with old Houston Baker, knelt down on his knees, and I knew him personally, and asked God to bless that church. And I mean, boy, the, the, the convention had run him off, and he went over there. And man, it's been all in years back. And God is still right there. God is still right there. Adding one, adding one, adding two, adding three, adding one, adding one, subtracting ten. 
Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't preach people out of church. I don't use that pulpit for that. I ain't got no shield. I don't need no shield. Amen. God saved me and called me God. I'm a man. And I called a man in my office and said, Brother, it's been good to have you and your wife here. And God bless you. And I realize you don't like to preach it. And I want you kids to the Lord. May God bless you if you find you another church. Yeah, yeah. Don't bother me a bit in the world. How many times do you do that, preacher? Four or five times a year. Four or five times a year. Find you a new church. You're, you're all swelled up over there. You're mad. And sometimes they just get right with God. And sometimes they just uh, they get right with a the preacher. They go move. I told my wife's uncle that. I said, boy, it's been good to have you. I said, man, you've been a blessing to us. And he has. And I said, I want you to do me a favor this morning. He said, anything in the world you want, preacher. I said, move your left. He said, are you serious? I said, it's a heart attack. You don't like that. You don't even understand that. There's no business in the world could survive ten minutes like a Baptist church is run. How, how, how many business men do we have in here? Raise your hand. In, in business men, I'm not going to pull no joke on you. Or John, if a guy couldn't sell a car, how long would you need him? Two minutes. Hmm. What if he didn't come to work, John, but once a month? How many times would you, would you need him? Oh, yeah. Oh, you said, Brother Wood, oh, we're going to encourage him to come to church. You've been encouraging him for 20 years. Ain't that about enough? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't believe all that, Brother Wood. That's all right. I do. And, boy, we're having a good time. Yeah. See, you create an atmosphere, and you don't have to come over here and look at this and look at that and look at this and look at that. And they like, you just say something about my kid. You just say something about my kid. Amen. I, I, I just went to a lady one day, and I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sweet. Just can't handle them angels. <laughs> but now, nowadays, 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 people have. When I was a boy, when a child was born illegitimate, they they took him, you know, and uh, uh, the, the the girl she'd leave town, and you said, well, I, I don't believe y'all to hide things. Well, that's all right. But let me just say this: Why do you bring a child like that to church? And I'm not against that child. Well, I, I've helped little old prostitutes and I've helped little old girls and one of the God will it. Well, really, I've wept over them and cried over them and paid for the baby to be born, ribbed the doctor to do it free. And Brother Willie, we've even went out and dug the graves and buried them when they died. But why does that little illegitimate child brought in the church by Grandma and say he can't go into nursery? Because he's special. Do you understand? He is a little bastard. And he's special in everybody's sight. He said, I don't like that, Brother Wood. No, I don't like that flesh. God help that little boy. And God help that little girl. And God help Grandma to quit walking around bragging about what your daughter did. Amen. He said, I don't like that, Brother Wood. It's the truth, anyhow. Whether you like it or don't like it, it doesn't make a bit of difference in the world. We have a supernatural God. Now, if you think these people won't bite you, you just tell them, take them to the nursery. You, you just tell them, take them to the nursery. This baby? Yes, that. What? This is a special baby. That's a supernatural God. <laughs> You know, Brother Pettis, or any preacher was going to preach first. I don't preach that, but I figured you'd probably get the last first. And the first last tonight would probably help you sleep. <laughs> the job is supernatural to develop men and women for the work of God. Uh, Brother Doug Fisher has, uh, two men has come from his church uh, here recently, well, not recently, in the last few years. They came to our church, and they've been a real blessing. One man came out, I don't even remember his name, he didn't stay there about a week, but he, he went somewhere else. But these other two men, they, they just came, and they just stayed. And I had one of those couples that stand up the other day, and I mean, they just came down, got involved, the women's soul. You know why they was that way? They'd been trained to do that. Yeah. They'd been trained to do that. And then they did, there wasn't no money, and that little old girl just got out to our senior the other day, fixing to have a baby. I fed him some perfume to help her husband. Well, he could preach on the street corner. 
I'm going to tell you something, boy. You better listen to me. When you start to get married, you better find you a W-O-M-E-E. -E. I'm talking about a woman. You said you can't spell it, but I know what it is. I don't have to spell it to know what it is. And there's a lot of difference between a girl and a woman. If you go into the work of God, you're going to have to get your wife boy. Danny Farley's walked up to me a minute time and said, Oh man, thank you. Thank you for raising me a woman for the work of God. Got to develop men and women in the saints of God. That's a supernatural job. You can't do it. Oh, you said, Brother Wood, we got the greatest discipline. <laughs> All of you will get together. You got to do like old Lester Olaf did. You going to have to teach how to fast and pray and get hold of God. You listen to me? Just living for God is supernatural. You think it ain't? Try. How come so many people can't do it? Because it's supernatural. And I hear people tell me all the time, I'm there Sunday morning, I'm there Sunday night, I'm there Wednesday night, and I said, you ain't worth a dime. They said, amen, I know I ain't, but I'm there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. But it's supernatural. They said, well, I want to give you this, please. We have a supernatural instruction. Now, we all get up and we say this King James Bible is the Word of God. And I believe it. And anyway, you believe it or not. Yeah, that's like you're talking about, I believe Jesus died for me. Yeah, but you ever accepted Christ as your Savior? That makes you saved, doesn't it? And so, you know, I don't never remember a time. I used to lay in jail and read the Bible. There wasn't no supernatural book to me. And my mama told me that was the Word of God, and I believed that. And I don't never remember a time in my life when I ever said the Bible is not the Word of God. Never remember my life. I know it's the Word of God. I know it's the word of God. But we have a supernatural. He said, go ye into all the world. Then he said, lo, I'm with you. And you know, many times we get to believe that he is not with us. That he is anywhere. He says, well, I, I don't feel him. I, I, he, he, he's there anyhow. Because he said he's going to be there. And I don't care how unfaithful you are, he's faithful. And he remains unfaithful, though we be unfaithful. You shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. And let me say this. This book still says he that when his soul is wise. And I find out. And you know what people tell me all the time? Everybody tells me. said, everybody in our town claims to be saved. Everybody claims to be saved. Love the inside. I know you work 10 and 12 hours a day in the streets of Houston every day. But Dean Sides' his mother is 82 years old. And I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that she works 40 to 50 hours a week in the streets of Houston. I know that. I walked up to her the other day and went in her house and just said that. And she said, I want you to meet these three ladies right here. She said, they've just been saved. I want you to meet them. It's in her house. Amen. Now, Brother Bill, Bill, Brother Bill's one of the speakers here tonight. You stayed in that little old trailer. It's just about like moving into Canaan. And all night long, the phone rang. She told the people, said, I'll move out of this here place if you let me keep my phone. She said, that same phone for 25 or 30 years. And that phone just rang day and night, day and night. And she'll call me. She'll say, Brother Jack, a little baby died this morning. Could you bear it? And some of the ladies come over to my house, and they got so many problems. I wonder why I never have had to counsel her. <laughs> I wonder why I haven't ever come for her. Huh? So Dean Sides has never called me and said, I'd like to come in your office. I need to sit down. I need some counseling, Brother Wood. I've got some terrific problems. I've got some the most serious problems. And no, whoa! What's the matter? My dogs don't have puppies. Uh, so we got a supernatural. We got a supernatural instruction. Jesus said. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I hear people call me on the phone and say, Brother Wood, I've spent all my money in preaching. 
I'm just here by faith. You're supposed to have been out of the way all the time. I never learned one thing but real good. Brother Lester told us that the just shall live by faith. In three weeks before he died, he said, Preacher, go down and find that building in Houston. I said, Preacher, a building here would cost a million dollars. He said, Preacher, I just got a hold of some money. And I, I just want you to go find the building. And God wasn't in. And I knew he wasn't anyone in the talking. Just, I could just hear some bells ringing. So somebody would have said, Brother Lester done it. And God wanted to do it by himself. And we just kept on. And, and for, I don't know, about these 10, 12 years, we prayed for that building. All the years we prayed for that building. And a man comes to me one night and he said, Do you know how you get a building? You go out there and, and blow the plans and, and get the land and get the material and build it. That's the way God told us to do it. God told us to pray. It's sad. We in it. It's not a big cathedral. It's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful building. And, and we got the plans, and the city's already okay to build all the front seats 600, and they're going to put a balcony up in the back of it. And he said, uh, Preacher, when are you going to build it? Ask him. You said, The plan's already set, the city's already get Yeah, okay. we got permission. And furthermore, some folks give me a little bit of money. We got about sixty grand in cash. That's more money I've ever had in my life. Supernatural. Christmas I got a, a little check. And it said, Preacher, just for old times sake. Thank you. Thirty years ago, what you done for our life is this three thousand. Didn't send it for a building for then didn't you know we building a building. Just send three grand. Somewhere I put it in the bank. Put it in the bank. Did you and your wife take care of all the money? Every bit of it. I'm sure that's empty. We have supernatural. You say you get in trouble. You don't know what trouble is. That one empty. <laughs> Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. I've experienced that. Now, I have experienced that. I mean, I've, I've tried it all, boy. If I finally come one day and I said, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. I've got to have you. i got to have you. My wife said, isn't it strange, John? Yeah? We was out there this week walking around me and Jim McGahey, over 40 acres of land God gave us, and all them nice buildings. And I was walking around, and I said, you know, one day I'd like to have a camp out here. One day I, I'd like to just, you know, have a youth camp. Oh, we got the building. We have youth camp all summer long. But, and God saved some kids and what have you, and uh, uh, just had a good time. But uh, uh, brother, brother Jim said, uh, "Well, wouldn't this be good, brother? Wouldn't that be good, brother?" And, and I said, "Now listen," and uh, I said, "You know, to myself, we want a little dime on this building, and I, I guess there's two hundred fifty, maybe three hundred thousand dollars worth of buildings there, and forty acres of land worth about three thousand an acre." And I said, "This stuff is paid for. We want a little dime on it. If I get all crippled up, I can move one of them little houses and live there." This is God. And my wife said, you know, God gave us that place. The lady walked right down that hall from Massachusetts, from Boston, Massachusetts, walked right down the front and said, did you want to buy a piece of land? And I, I said, well, not really. I don't have any money. And she said, I've I got a place for 60000 for it. And it, her and her husband talked a little bit and come back and said, we'll take forty for it. I said, I'm not interested. And she come back and she said, listen, we got the forty, and I'll take 20-something thousand for it. And I said, sold. She said, y'all have a board meeting? I said, just have it. <laughs> just have the boss. You said ain't the way we do it. Do it any way you want to. I don't care. I'm not telling you how to do it. If I was telling me some of y'all, I'd get somebody to do it. Amen. 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 We have supernatural, supernatural instruction from God. I don't have to ask nobody else nothing. I've got some supernatural instruction. I knew what God wanted me to do. There I got saved. God wanted me in the ghetto of you. I've been out of there. I've been gone sometimes. But God wanted me downtown. You, that's what God wanted me. Mm-hmm. My soul. I was coming in the building out there in an old Mexican just got out of prison. He walked out there and he looked in that car. He looked in that Lincoln. And he said, Jackie Boy Woods, is that you? I jumped out of that car. You were me. You were driving. I jumped out of that car. And hear, hear that message, what he said. 
Thank you, boy. Is that you? I said, that's me. And I called him by his name. He told both arms around my neck. I mean, his arms are old, dope thing, lost without God and without hope. And he said, God, get me off. Why are you I said, on my way to heaven. Where have you been? He said, in the penitentiary. Man, we talked and we talked about what God had done for me. That's what God wants me. I'd rather win a Mexican dope fiend than I would a multi billionaire. I don't know what happened to me, but John, you've seen it. I mean, my, my shirt tail just runs up down my back like a window shade. It's supernatural. Supernatural. I hate, I hate a professional in this ministry. Let me get my Bible. I want to carry my Bible, my doctor said. Let me get up to the platform. God, just you. You're a first class actor. Why don't you just go on to Hollywood and get your job? They're probably you, Jack. They got a lot of phonies. You have a supernatural enemy, you aware of that? This Bible said, But you shall receive power as the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. Well, you need that part, Brother Wood. Satan knows what your job is. He loves no better than you do. But he knows your job. He's going to stop. Brother Earl, has there ever been any thing out there, opposition, to stop you from going down them highways and them roads? You don't even know what? Earl told me, I don't know how many years this man traveled in these mountains, me and him. 1960, we preached all over down the Carolinas and all up down them highways. I'd go and visit me and him, just go up down them highways, preach. He said, Pass your hat. I said, Do what? He said, Pass your hat. I said, Earl, I ain't passing my hat. He said, Pass the hat or push the car. I said, I'll, put, I'll pass the hat. And two or three times I had to pass the hat and push the car. You said, Brother Wood, uh, how many people have ever been saved in a row? I don't know. Brother Earl, when, one time I asked Brother Earl, years ago, oh, 35 years ago, I asked him, I said, Brother Earl, let me ask you something. We used to, Brother Howes and Joe Boyd, Brother Walker, and they used to have a thing out in Texas called the Premillennial Fellowship of Texas. And we used to go to that thing. We'd have all the great preachers there, Oliver Green, all of them come, and they'd preach, and Seidler, and all those men. And uh, I said, Brother Earl, is there any uh, Premillennial people live where you at? He said, I don't know, Brother Jack. He said, uh, there's some Presbyterians over there. <laughs> I, I said, but premillennial, Earl, he said, I ain't never heard of one of them, Brother <laughs> Been preaching? Been preaching? Getting people saved? Well, Brother Woods, you know, man, did you take that chart and draw it? I can't even draw. And at that time, I couldn't even spell my name. Went to school three days in my brother's place. <laughs> you said, you're not too smart. How smart are you supposed to be when you live like that? Amen. You're not supposed to be smart. God didn't say there's a blessing about being smart. He did say something about being filled with the Spirit. Didn't he? See, we have a supernatural end. And Satan knows your job because you got up here and declared it. God called me to preach. God called me to be a missionary. God called me to work with this people up here. And the devil met you and you know, stuck your thumb and cry. You just run into a supernatural enemy. You got that tonight? Satan is a veteran of spiritual warfare. I've seen people shouted out. And before daylight, they didn't see I'm here to tell you, God sent you here to hear something. Won't you just shut your mouth and hear? Amen. And God gets to move around here about Thursday night and Friday. You know, a lot of people get to shouting and cutting up. And Wednesday night, they say, Brother, I got to go. I got to go. And then God moves in about Friday, and everybody gets to shout. Maybe it's because they left. I don't know. I don't know. But 
I'm just trying to take these things and these events and Satan is that he is a veteran at this thing. I mean, you know, he'll just he just you be going down the road and you say, I, I gotta be there. I got I mean me and Barry we're gonna sing. As I thought. You walk out there, no problem, man, I got the spare. And it's salt. <laughs> then you start drinking my Lord, where's God at here? Same place. Same place. The problem ain't where God is. The problem is where you're at. See, Satan is a veteran. I had a man that I know. He told me, he said, his tire was flat like that. And he said, Lord, I, I told you, you know. And I, you know. And about that time, a highway patrolman right here in North Georgia pulled up behind him and said, uh, you having a problem? And he said, yes, sir. And he said, we got the tire changed. And I started getting that car. And he said, God just kept nudging me. And, and, I, and I said, sir, have you ever been saved? And that old highway patrolman said, no, sir, but I've always wanted to be. He's a veteran at it. But he ain't never won the battle. He ain't never won the battle. He's a veteran. Satan has many devices. And I hate to tell you this, preacher, but usually sometimes me and you are it. I was in a prison one time in a South American country. Hadn't been there just a short while, about six months. And uh, uh, my wife, she went to church. So she took a couple of these kids there with her, and they a couple of them, one of the boys, and Marsha, and Danny's wife, probably, and little. They went in this church. And they was going down there, and, uh, and this uh, cab, this uh, driver, this preacher was the driver, he picked her up, and his wife, and he had his robe on. And he, what was he? he was from a Christian church, only church in town, a Sushan Paraguay. Now, there's two Baptist churches there now. But anyway, she was, uh, she was going down there, and there was a donkey in the road. And this guy started blowing at that donkey, so that donkey was really interested in where he was going. And that donkey just kept walking. And this old lady was sitting up on his back and had a bunch of things on her. And she was going down the road, and, and finally this lady grabbed her hand and said, Don't say, No! We need to be in church. No, that donkey didn't know and didn't care either. And she just kept on going and going. And finally they got to the church. Has this ever happened to you? And they, But it was a train with you, wasn't a donkey. It was a train. And you was already three minutes late because your wife stopped to do something. Amen. Or you were sitting in the car blowing the horn. You hadn't done nothing. But anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this preacher got out of the car and he, he got out of the car and he started to walk on. It had been raining. Why, well, no. No! You've got your robe in the mud. <laughs> God, you're going to preach with a dark robe. A lot of badness to it all the time. <laughs> they went inside, and Joe, that little girl of mine, she come outside, and she said, Look what I got, Mama. I got three cookies. What'd you get? She said, Nothing. Out of sight. God help us, preacher. We got a supernatural job to feed the flock of God. Did you ever think about it in a congregation of people on Sunday morning? Uh, you bring 15 sinners in there and, uh, and 15 backslidden Christians in there and some other folks who really need some help. And if you're going to preach a 30 minute message, and you're going to cover everything, and you're going to feed this bunch here, you're going to rebuke this bunch here, and you're going to try to help these unsaved. Did you ever think about what all you had to go through for God to do a supernatural job? To take?